In 2020, the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine was awarded to three scientists who contributed to the discovery of hepatitis C. For us healthcare professionals, hepatitis C is not an uncommon disease and it was already long incorporated into our syllabus. So why was the discovery being awarded now? Well, the reason is simple. The Nobel Prize Committee is extremely careful in terms of their selection process and it took them a long time to observe that this discovery of hepatitis C is making a huge impact in terms of global health. However, for the public, hepatitis C might not be as famous as hepatitis A or hepatitis B. But do you know that hepatitis C is also one of the main causes of liver cirrhosis which means the scarring of liver, liver cancer, as well as liver failure. If you have a look at this US statistics on CDC, you can appreciate that hepatitis C does cause a significant amount of infectious burden yearly. The story of hepatitis C from discovery to cure is very much allied to the plot of a good mystery novel. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Stephen Lee. In this video, let us explore the disease that causes a huge burden on global health, the Hepatitis C. Let us have a look at the word Hepatitis. It's a combination of the Greek word hepa, which means liver, and itis, which means inflammation. So if we put them together, hepatitis simply means the inflammation of the liver. It's mainly caused by viral infections, although alcohol abuse, drug misuse, and environmental toxins, and autoimmune diseases are other important causes too. In the 1940s, it became clear that there were two main types of infectious hepatitis. The first one, named Hepatitis A, is transmitted through contaminated water or food and it has little long-term impact on the patients. The second type, Hepatitis B, which is transmitted through blood and bodily fluid, poses a much dangerous threat because it can lead to serious complications such as liver cirrhosis, liver cancer, and liver failure. This form of hepatitis is insidious because patients can stay silently infected for many years before the serious complications set in. In fact, in year 1976, Dr. Baruch Bloomberg was awarded in the Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology for the discovery of hepatitis B, which later contributed greatly in terms of diagnostic tests and creating effective vaccines for hepatitis B. The blood test developed for hepatitis B has successfully resulted in a decrease of the post-transfusion related hepatitis cases. However, through the screening of hepatitis B virus and the exclusion of hepatitis B donors, there were only about 25 to 50% reduction in terms of post-transfusion hepatitis. This was observed by Dr. Harvey Alter and his colleagues. This meant that something else was actually damaging the liver. It was a great source of concern because a great number of patients receiving blood transfusion had developed post-transfusion hepatitis due to an unknown infectious agent. Dr. Alter showed that the agent was transmissible through the transfer of serum from an infected patient to the chimpanzees. Dr. Alter also observed that this agent had the characteristics of a virus. However, for the next 15 years, the culprit behind this post-transfusion hepatitis was left unknown, and we just simply call them as non-A, non-B hepatitis. In these modern days, polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, has provided us an easy way to amplify the viral genetic materials. And in fact, this is what helped us to sequence the COVID-19 genetic materials within weeks of its emergence. However, back in 1980s, PCR was not available and the scientists had to use the traditional way 
to identify the hepatitis C virus. In the 1980s, Michael Houghton and his team created a collection of genetic materials derived from the blood of the infected chimpanzees. They thought that this genome of the infected chimpanzees would most likely be the same as normal healthy chimpanzees. But there must be a small part of this genome that belonged to this mysterious virus. And the researchers also believed that the infected human beings would also produce some sort of antibodies against this virus. Over a six year period, Michael Houghton and his team took out hundreds of millions of clones, the entire genetic library of the infected chimpanzees, and put them on plates. And he also took the blood serum of the non-A, non-B patient, and they screened and compared those plates. And out of these millions of clones, there was one that was matching, and that's the one, the hepatitis C genome. The discovery of hepatitis C was a big breakthrough. However, there was an essential piece that was missing. Could the virus alone cause hepatitis? To answer this question, scientists have to prove that the clone virus was able to replicate and cause the hepatitis. The virus genome that was previously reported by Dr. Michael Houghton was not able to be cultured in the lab. And this was where Dr. Charles Rice came into play. Dr. Charles Rice discovered that a previously uncharacterized part of the virus genome might be responsible for the replication of the virus. And he also noticed some variations that could possibly stop the replication of the virus. In 1996, Dr. Charles Rice provided a complete description for the hepatitis C virus genome. And in the following year, he successfully demonstrated the infectious nature of hepatitis C. This was the final proof that the hepatitis C virus was the mysterious agent which caused more than half of the chronic hepatitis related to blood transfusion. And therefore, Nobel Prize was awarded to those three scientists. Globally, about 71 million people are living with chronic hepatitis C infection, but the prevalence vary greatly between different countries. If you have a look at the map provided by CDC, you can see that there are areas where there's a lot of hepatitis C. One of these areas worth mentioning is Egypt. Egypt is one of the countries with highest prevalence and incidence of hepatitis C. In year 2009, as much as 10% of the population in Egypt were infected with hepatitis C virus. This meant that one in every 10 Egyptians was having hepatitis C. How did Egypt end up with such a high amount of hepatitis C cases? For many, many years, the Nile Delta has been an ideal breeding ground for the cystosomiasis, a parasite transmitted to humans by freshwater snails. This worm can cause nasty diseases involving the liver as well as the bladder. In the mid-20th century, the Egyptian government had conducted multiple mass treatment campaigns involving intravenous medications to eradicate cystosomiasis. As a result, the cases of cystosomiasis reduced significantly over the years, but due to the repeatedly reuse of needles, hepatitis C virus was being transmitted silently among the populations. The good news is that today, Egypt is the country that has taken the largest step in eliminating hepatitis C infection so far, with the largest treatment campaign using highly effective regimes. And this has resulted in more than two and a half millions of Egyptians getting cured of the disease. The goal of treatment for hepatitis C is to reach the cure, which is measured by sustained virologic response or SVR. 
This is defined as an undetectable genetic materials in the hepatitis C virus called RNA 12 weeks upon completion of the therapy. In the very beginning, doctors used the medication called interferon in attempt to treat hepatitis C. Interferon is a natural protein produced by the immune cells in response to viral infection. Interferon interferes with the replication of virus and hence that's how it gets its name, interferon. However, treating with interferon alone only yielded an SVR of about 20%. Then, the doctors tried to combine the interferon with other antiviral medications and one of the more common ones would be the rebarberin and this combination had yielded a SVR of about 30 to 40 percent. Another improvement came when doctors used chemically modified interferon called the PET interferon combined with rebarberin that yielded a SVR of about 50 percent. So this was the standard of care for hepatitis C patient. While interferon-based therapy was typically successful for half of the patients, it was associated with numerous side effects such as fever, muscle ache, fatigue, and a lot of the patients could not tolerate these side effects. The outlook of the disease changed in year 2013 when a new group of medications emerged against the hepatitis C. This new group of medications have much fewer side effects and it can achieve more than 90% of SVR with just 8 to 12 weeks of oral therapy. This group of medications are called the Direct Acting Antivirals DAAs. The introduction of DAAs was a really good news to all the hepatitis C patients, but the major obstacles to its access was the expensive price. When the drug was first introduced in the US market, it was priced at about 86,000 US dollar per patient. The high price of this medication has garnered substantial attention from both the medical and lay communities. On the brighter side, nowadays, voluntary licensing agreements between the originators and the generic manufacturers have enabled some low- and middle-income countries to buy or produce their own generic version of these hepatitis C viral medications at a much lower price. And that's how and why Egypt is at the forefront of eliminating hepatitis C infection. Unlike hepatitis B, there is no vaccine against hepatitis C to date. The main reason is because hepatitis C is a very variable virus. Hepatitis C occurs in at least 7 genotypes with more than 60 subtypes and different genotypes of this hepatitis C affects different parts of the world and a vaccine that is effective in covering all the variants of the hepatitis C virus is difficult to create. Alright, so this is the story of hepatitis C. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video to your friends. I'll be posting more medical-related videos in the future. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Stephen Lee.